Welcome to Electron Online. In this video, we're going to try to find the rate of change of the radius with respect to time, the dr dt. So again, it always is important to understand what we're finding the change of, and we're trying to find the change of the radius here, and with respect of. So notice in this case, we're trying to find dr dt. Now, when we look at what we've been given, we've been given the volume of the balloon, with respect to the radius, and we're given the volume of the balloon with respect to time. But we're not given the radius with respect to time. So, that means is we need to find an equation that will work for us. So first what we're going to do is we're going to find the radius as a function of the volume, and then we're going to substitute the volume as a function of time. So using this equation right here, let's see here, we're going to move the 3 across, the 4 down here, so this becomes 3 times the volume divided by 4 pi is equal to the radius cubed. And of course, if we then reverse the equation, so what I did here is I put the 3 up there, the 4 down here, the pi down here to get this. And now we're going to take the cube root of both sides. So we can say that the radius as a function of the volume, so to speak, and I guess we can write it like that, is equal to the cube root of the quantity 3 times the volume over 4 pi. And then, since we want to find the radius as a function of time, I can now substitute because this here is the volume as a function of the radius, right? It's proportional, or at least it's, it's related to each other. But now when we replace the volume as the function of time into here, let's see what we get. So now we can say that the radius as a function of time is equal to the cube root of 3 times the volume. Now the volume is equal to this. So that would be, well let me write the 4 pi down. So we have 3 over 4 pi. Now the volume will be 4 pi over 3. And then we have this quantity in here. That would be the quantity t squared plus 5 to the 3 halves power. Okay, now we can simplify that a little bit. Okay, we have the 3, that cancels out the 4, the pi, that's kind of nice. And now let's see here, the cube root of this quantity to the third power and then the square root of that. So that means that the radius as a function of time is going to be equal to the square root, which is t squared plus 5 to the 1 half power, the square root of that. And now we can go ahead and find the dr dt. So now we have r as a function of time. So now you can say that dr dt is equal to, when we take the derivative of this, we put the 1 half in front, times t squared plus 5, times to the exponent minus 1, which is to the minus 1, times the derivative of what's inside, which would be 2t. Now you can see here that this 2 will cancel out this 2, and we have dr dt is equal to, we have a t in the numerator, and the square root of t squared plus 5 in the denominator. So now we have the rate of change of the radius with respect to time as a function. Now we can evaluate that function when t is equal to 2. So we can say here that dr dt when t is equal to 2, is equal to, and now we replace every t with a 2, so I have a 2 in the denominator, divided by the square root of 2 squared plus 5. Of course, that's 9, the square root of 9 is 3, so this would be equal to 2 thirds, and that would be the rate of change of the radius with respect to time. And of course, that depends upon what the units are, but that could be centimeters per second or meters per second, whatever the units are in our particular problem. And that's how it's done.